Hello YouTube, and welcome to a new episode of Judging and Grading Every Fitness Channel. If it is your first time watching this series, the concept is extremely simple. I take a fitness channel and I judge it using 20 different criteria that each gets scored from 0 to 10, which means that at the end, each channel gets a total grade out of 200. And the closer they get to 200, the better the channel is. Since the last episode was almost a year ago, I think it would be a good idea that we go over the criteria together. So quickly, here are the 20 that I use. The first one is programming. So the ability to explain muscle building concepts and principles to the audience, how pertinent they are and how relevant they are to people who want to get big by following the influencer. Then there is experience, how long they've been lifting, what they've been doing when they were lifting, what sports, how high of a level did they achieve, their integrity, if they sold out, if they went against their word, if they betrayed their audience, usefulness to noobs, intermediates, advanced, how much are you really getting from watching their content, character, if they have charisma, if they're relatable, if they're fake, if I can tell that this is complete bullshit and just a gimmick, and if they are a good person, all of which, of course, is subjective and based on what I believe. There's also dogmatism. How much do they think that they're the second coming of Jesus Christ, and how much are they able to realize that they are a fallible human, which then makes them a better educator? Originality, are they just a clone of someone else, or do they bring something new and fresh to the platform? Black pill, do they discourage natural lifters? Do they encourage them to take drugs? Humor or comedy, how funny are they, or are they bland like a piece of paper? Parasocial, is there an unhealthy connection with the audience where the audience looks up to them like a sort of god, and do they abuse that relationship? Empathy, their ability to relate and to communicate with the people that watch them as a human being and not just an influencer there to sell them garbage. God complex, do they understand that their subjectivity plays a role? Are they humble? Are they modest? Etc. Etc. Do they accept fault when they fuck up? Very important. Production quality, so the image, the sound, the editing. Science, do they base their training on anecdotal evidence or empirical evidence, so studies, for example. Clickbait, how bad do they clickbait with their titles, their thumbnails? Do they do drama content, which is the peak of clickbait? Content recycling, how much do they just redo the same shit times and times again? Are they able to reinvent themselves? Conciseness, is the content short? Is it to the point? Or is it super fluffed up for the watch time? Is it too lengthy? Seniority, how long have they been doing that? Because it's very easy to be at the top of your game on YouTube for a year. But if you've been doing this shit for 10 years and you're still able to be the top dog, then this means something, you're doing something right. Supplements, so supplements is a minus, meaning that if you do sell supplements, especially bogus supplements, you get a low grade. And if you don't sell them, you get a 10. Physique, how great is their physique? Ranging from zero to 10. And that is the 20. So now you know what I'm basing the entire grade on. And every single time I grade, of course, for every single person on this list, I'm going to tell you why. I won't just say, oh, conciseness 9 or character 10 and won't explain. Especially if I give a low grade, I always want to make sure that you know the reason. That's what makes the charm of this series. It's what makes them interesting to follow. So that was for what you have to pay attention to. This is technically episode 7, so if you missed the previous installments, know that they're all in the description available for you. I've already covered the majority of fitness channels, but there are some that I haven't touched yet. Namely, the ones I'm going to review today, because I want to do something new with the new episodes I have for this series. Now, I'm going to start to separate them by themes. And we're starting today with the first theme, which is Zoomers, the Zoomer edition, as I like to call it. And what I mean by this is that I'm going to be covering fitness channels where the person who runs the channel tends to be younger. And also that the audience that consume the channel themselves tend to be younger. So, quote unquote, Zoomers, even though this generation is now starting to get quite old. But you understand what I'm talking about when I use that moniker. The reason why I wanted to start with the Zoomer channels, it's because it's gotten very popular these days to shit on these guys. 
for being broccoli head TikTok addicts that know nothing about fitness and are just obsessed with aesthetics and funk music. And I don't find this to be fair. I don't find this to be okay because there is no real observation or analysis going on here. It's just the older generation shitting on the younger generation because of jealousy, because they're different, because they're doing something new. So in this episode, I'm going to try and remain as objective as possible. And I'm going to grade them using objective criteria to see if all of the hate for Zoomers is justified or if all of that is just bullshit made up by old people who are not able to keep up with the game and, again, who are jealous of the popularity of these youngins. So, let us get started with the first name on my list for today, namely Lex Lito. For programming, I'm giving Lex a 4. Lex is following a long line and a long tradition of power building that was established by David Laid. All of these guys who used to be affiliated with Jim Shark and used to always collab with one another, they all trained the same. They had this hyper focus on compound movements like the bench or the sumo deadlift and they would spam that. And when you listen to them talk, they would tell you outright that this is what they wanted to get better at. The majority of them didn't even train for aesthetics. So their crazy good looking bodies were just the byproduct of this subpar training method because yes, spamming sumo deadlifts is subpar. It won't make you look better. It might work for these guys for some reason, but for you, it's not good information to follow. And outside of that, there's not really a focus on volume intensity. The splits promoted tend to not be super detailed, I guess. And that's fine if the guy doesn't want to focus on that, but it's not a good resource. For experience, I'm giving Lex a six because he's actually been training for a long time. And I found that the, the younger you start in this lifting business, the more information you're going to be able to share because the most mistakes you've accumulated. So if you started at 15, you have a leg up on people who start at 20 and that is exactly his case. Now, the issue is that he still himself is young, so I cannot give him a better grade than that. He still has a lot to learn. For integrity, seven. You know, with all of these Gymshark kids, they all have drama and we've see, we're seeing that nowadays unfold with like this Dylan guy because a lot of them were on PEDs and got caught or had to admit it at some point because their physiques fluctuated too much or they sold bogus supplement or they sold bogus programs at some point or the other. They got caught with their hands in the cookie jar. From what I know, that never happened to Lex. So I'm not going to shit on the guy because apparently his integrity is intact. I might not like or agree with the process and the mindset of these people, but that has nothing to do with grading a channel. So seven. For usefulness, 6.5. It's actually decently useful to watch his videos. You will learn some things. You will learn about biomechanics sometimes. You will learn about new lifts to integrate into your practice. And that, to me, is already better than the majority of the vlog-type content you can find on this type of channel. So it's not a complete waste of your time. For character, 8. And that's just my bias, but I'm a sucker for weebs and Lex is a massive dweeb when you have a fucking Pokemon cap that were at the gym when all you wear is anime t-shirts how can I then turn around and not like you because you're my people so of course he's going to get a good grade for that I understand that some people find this shit cringe but it's it feels good to see this new generation of kids coming through who are meatheads technically but at heart they're nerds because it's exactly what I am so I can relate. And I think that many people can relate as well if you're on this channel. For Dogmatism 10, because Lex just does whatever he finds fits his goals and needs, and he doesn't feel the need to push that onto the audience too much. Naturally, people tend to copycat, so this is why I gave him a bad grade for programming. But outside of that, he's not preachy, unlike some power builders who truly believe that their method is the best for some reason. He is, again, just doing what he's peers or his ancestors in the sense in a sense have done for years and years and he sees no reason to deviate so perfect grade for originality too for the same reason that i just gave him a perfect grade for dogmatism because he is literally a clone of the david lades of the past all of these guys make the exact same type of content they seem to believe the exact same thing they have the exact same takes and so you are literally just watching the same channel and the same videos, but produced by different individuals. And this is the limitation of vlogs, of course. 
It's tough to do something new when you only produce vlogs. So he gets a shit grade for that. For Black Pill A5, the guy claims to be natural, and this is not an alley or not, so this is not going to be a big topic in this video, but I buy it. If he says it, I buy it. I don't see anything crazy or impossible with his physique. So he might be someone who is going to encourage young lifters to train hard and to actually get serious with the gym. But at the same time, he collabs with people who are openly on PEDs and these people spread a terrible message. So I split the hapo in half, as we say in French, and I'm giving him a five. For humor, a six. Lex is not haha -ha funny, but he has this relatability that makes it so that sometimes he'll go on these weird rants and he'll say something fucked up or out of the ordinary that will make me chuckle. And I am a tough cookie to crack when it comes to that. So I cannot shit on the dude when it comes to comedy. He is not trying to be funny, but he is unintentionally funny most times. For Power Social, a four simply because the type of influence and the type of uh, relationship and connection that this specific type of influencer creates with the audience, it's toxic. I can't explain why, or rather, I think it's because of the aesthetic aura and it's the Ziz phenomenon, I guess, where you end up with a bunch of younger kids on these channels who look at these people as gods and who then end up mimicking their personality which is the exact opposite of what should be happening because the reason why you like Lex and people like this is because their personality stands out. It's because they seem to be interesting individuals in day-to-day -day life. So it's a shame that at the same time, they tend to produce clones. Then there is empathy, 8.5. Usually if you have a very low grade for power social, it's because your empathy and your ability to connect is high and it's the case for Lex. Sometimes you watch influencers and they tend to behave in ways that make you think that there is absolutely no fucking way they behave like this in everyday life because they would get shot. It's not the same for Lex. He is who he is on camera and I believe that he is the same in everyday life. And so it's very easy to connect because the guy could literally be someone you hang out with. He seems to be quite the good dude. And also the fact that you see him with his friends in the videos help because you can project, you can put yourself in the shoes of the friend. And I'm certain that a ton of Lex Little fanboys would kill to be able to actually be his friend and actually hit with him and hit the gym with him. Then we have God Complex. So God Complex is a nine to me because Lex is down to earth. Unlike some of his little Gymshark buddies, he didn't buy into his own hype right? He's not smelling his own thoughts, thinking he's the greatest. And I think it's the reason why his longevity is stupendous. He's still there. Like the, the boat has sunk a long ass time ago and the Titanic is now at the bottom of the abyss and there's a bunch of corpse in that boat, but he left on the raft a long, a long time ago and he's still doing tremendous. So for that, I have to salute him. Then we have production quality seven. It's not great, but the sound quality is there. The, the camera quality is there. The editing is present to cut off the fluff. It's nothing revolutionary, but it's not terrible. Then we have science, a six. So once in a while, you will get Lex showing you an exercise and I'll explain to you why he does this. So it shows that he has learned with times, with experience, but it's not his big focus and I get it. It's not what his audience wants. When you click on the Lex Little video, you don't want to receive a biology lecture. Then we have clickbait, an eight because, and this is something that is sort of counterintuitive. You would think that this, this type of influencer and the Zoomers in particular would be much worse with the clickbait, but actually it's the old generation that's the worst with this shit. It's all of these dudes who are in their forties who clickbait out of their ass. Lex doesn't clickbait. So I'm going to give him an eight. Most of the titles are like just descriptions of whatever you're going to get in the video. It's very simple and straightforward. Then we have content recycling. This one is bad. So I'm giving Lex a two for content recycling because literally every video is the same as the previous one. And you can already know that it's going to be the exact same as the next. He's doing the same thing times and times again. And he's been doing that shit for years. And I get it. That's what vlogs are supposed to be about. But it fascinates me that it, it would be possible to survive as an influencer, a content creator, when you essentially just recreate the same piece times and times again. Imagine if a painter made the exact same painting 150 times. At some point, people would be like, okay, can we have some new shit? It's the same for singers, but hey, if it works, it works. Conciseness for the videos are sometimes long for no reason. I 
for these videos, I prepare. So it's influencers that I know about, and then I watch a ton of their content to make sure that I actually speak about things that I know. And Jesus Christ, sometimes the guy will film himself for five minutes, uncut, eating a sandwich. Who has time for this? I don't. My brain wants to escape my, my score and just go on vacation to Hawaii. It doesn't want to sit there, look at a guy munch chips or stuff his face. What type of entertainment is that? And I get it. It's that mukbang fa fade that apparently young people seem to enjoy. So this is not for me. And I think that for most people, most people my age, it wouldn't be either. But it's not why I gave him a bad grade for this. It's just that in general, the videos are way too long for no reason. Then we have seniority. Lex channel is six years old, almost to the day. And it's interesting to see his journey, right? Because he started as just a kid with a dream and a camera, and now he is quite a big name. So I'm giving him a seven. You'll see that for the seniority grade, I changed things around for the Zoomer edition because naturally these kids are all young. So I'm not going to shit on their grades just because they so happen to be born too late. It would make no sense. I keep calling them kids. Most of them are not even that young compared to me, but hey, that's a different story altogether. Then we have supplements. Three, because he is sponsored by Gor Gorilla Mind, which is tough to pronounce for me. And even though this is not an idea or not, I think that it's always a telltale sign when an athlete gets sponsored by Gorilla Mind, because usually it's the sign that the things that they intake is not just vitamins. There's something going on here. I don't know of a single person who's natural that I can vouch for is natural who is sponsored by More Plates, More Dates. So, three because the supplements sold by this company are for the most part bogus and they do nothing. And then we have physique. I give him a nine because Lex Lido has a very aesthetic physique. He also has that uh, frame and body shape where even when he's booked up, he has a fat face. So he has the moon face, but his physique doesn't suffer that much. He doesn't end up with these big like buoys next to his body. He doesn't get moves. He just looks like a Titan, like a golem made of flesh. So tremendous physique, natural or not. And so as a total grade, Lex Little earns 122. Next name on the list is going to be Max Yucida or Yuchida. Depends if you want to pronounce it correctly or not. For programming, I'm giving Max a nine. Tremendous resource for anyone who wants to learn more about how to build muscle. It might not look like it, from the outside, because a lot of it looks like shorts, it looks like clickbait. But if you do end up being clickbaited, you will learn a ton. And I wanted to really up the grade for this one because it is, I find personally amazing to see such a young individual who already knows so much about lifting, who dodged most of the traps of lifting, he's not falling for all of this nonsense, and who has the ability to separate le grain de livret. He's able to separate the gimmick from the stuff that actually works and he's sharing that with his audience. Then we have experience. So uh, only a five for experience, because from what I was able to find, the guy was never an athlete before. His only passive history in lifting is lifting, and he didn't start that long ago. So he still has a long journey ahead of him. That's normal. He's only a college student. Then we have integrity, A9, no drama, some people, Greg Doucette, of course, tried to drag him into this entire natty or not nonsense. And he had a very respectful response and a very mature response, which really should put Greg to shame because he is being taught lessons about how to behave like an adult by people who are half his fucking age. But that's also a different discussion. So I give him a nine for that. He never sold out and he could if he wanted because he has tremendous amounts of subscribers so he could monetize very easily. But he has stayed the course and he really seems to only be interested in sharing his knowledge. And that's the type of fitness professional I want to see more of. Then we have usefulness. 8.5. You would be hard pressed to click on the Max Uchida video and not find something new, not find something that you're going to learn from. I docked some points because this is only really true if you're a novice or intermediate. If you're advanced, naturally, you're not going to learn much from the guy. But advanced people are the equivalent of Dodo, the Dodo bird that went extinct a long time ago. We make up the smallest portion of the de demographic, so we don't get to dictate the content. It's just the law of numbers. Character two, because he has the personality of a bland piece of cardboard. And I'm sorry for the people who like him. I'm not trying to be mean or an asshole, but it's watching him is tough. It's tough to get through some of the videos because 
there's nothing there. Uh, we can hate on Zoomers as much as we want, and we can hate on the people who run gimmicks and who run characters, but people do it for a reason. It's because it makes you interesting, and it makes you someone that is worth watching. Watching Max is like watching the news. Sure, I'm going to learn a lot, but shit, I would rather watch a movie by Michael Bay. Then we have Dogmatism 5, because, and this is a quirk of intelligence, he has a tendency to be a bit too cut and loose with things that he believes don't work. And so he will be a bit too extreme when it comes to telling his audience not to do certain things because they're bad or they can kill your gains. That's fine at some level because you have to have the ability to cut the crap. But if you cut too much of the crap, you might eventually cut a gem. For originality 5, he's not doing anything new, but we don't need him to do anything new. And on top of that, sometimes he has the ability to take concepts that are overdone and he gives them a twist and a flair that I appreciate. So for example, he recently started a vlog series, which everyone fucking does because it's popular. But when he did it, it felt fresh. It felt like something I hadn't seen before. So I appreciate that ability he has of bringing something to the platform that, while not, again, a revolution, is still not something we've seen a billion fucking times before. Next, we have the Black Pill, a perfect 10. The guy is not on PEDs, unlike what some idiots want you to think. He's a young man who has a good physique, trains hard, and understands what the fuck he's doing. So, I think that he is a great influence for the people who watch him. And overall, the fact that you have a dude who is young and who has a worthy physique, who's not a stick, is going to do a lot into convincing young, younger person, younger men to not jump on drugs because they have an example, a role model in front of their eyes that has accomplished great things without having to resort to these extreme means. For comedy and humor, I give him a two. Likewise, just with like character, the guy is not funny. And he is not trying to be, right? We're not dealing with someone who is a womp womp type of dude who attempts jokes and fails. There are just no jokes. It's dry and it's not something that I like. I come from the Jason Genovas of the, of the wood. This is my, what I started watching when I started watching YouTube Fitness. So I am, in a sense, biased towards that. But I think it's fair to dock him on that because he has tremendous grades everywhere else. For Power Social 8, even though he has 2 million subscribers and he is young, it's interesting to see that his audience doesn't seem that attached to him, which could also be because his character is not that developed at all. And also because I think he makes a great effort towards making sure he doesn't become this god in the eyes of people. That must be pointed out, it must be highlighted, it must be praised. It's very easy to fall for your own bullshit and to buy into your own cult. Because when you have a ton of people, like a million people, who love you and say that you're the next big thing, you need to have a lot of maturity to resist that. And I hope that's a trait that he keeps preserving because it will keep him going in the game. And for empathy, a nine. So you see here that there's a contradiction. I told you that usually people with lots of empathy and ability to connect tend to rank low on parasocial, but he manages the miracle of getting both. The dude is super relatable. He feels like an everyday human. He feels like an everyday dude. And it is great to witness. Even his face, I don't mean to be rude, but he looks homely. You know what I mean? Like, he looks like a type of guy that you would see walking at the supermarket. He is one of us, quite literally. And for God Complex, I also give him a 9. The dude is just down-to-earth, modest guy who is in a position where he could be a complete joke of, but he has decided not to. And that might also be because, from what I understand, I don't mean to pry, but his social life and his ability to also excel academically is also quite developed. So we are dealing with someone who is not a gym cell. Production quality, 8. Excellent mic, excellent camera, good shooting, but nothing that makes you think, oh my god, I, it feels like I'm watching a Hollywood movie, which for some people is a plus. Science, 8. Good balance between finding the ability to utilize studies and utilize empirical evidence and also relying on your own experience to enlighten the viewer. It is the exact type of compromise that I think makes a good influencer. That way you don't fall for one extreme or the other. Clickbait 4. You don't get to 2 million subscribers on YouTube by not clickbaiting. 
He has a tendency to make titles that are flashy and very attractive, but hey, that's the name of the game, baby. If you want to make it in this business, that's what you got to do. Content Recycling 8, which considering the type of format that he makes should not be possible. But even though he does these tutorials, he does these very short, short videos, these shorts that are all the same at the first glance, he always finds a way to twist it so that it makes it appear like it's brand new. He makes series, but the episodes are so disconnected that you can't even tell it's a series. And that's a strength because being able to present a content to your audience that is time tested and true to your ability to teach them, while at the same time convincing them they're going to watch something they've never seen before, is a skill. And it's a skill that, from what I've perceived on this platform, cannot really be taught. And the cherry on top is that it's also super concise. So that's a nine. One, because he makes shorts, and shorts are concise by nature, but also his tutorials. Like, he got famous off of the two minutes tutorials, which contains and condenses a ton of information in a very short format. Now, personally, as a human being, I despise this and I puke on shorts because they destroy people's life's attention span and ability to actually focus on things that matter in life. But at the same time, I understand that between someone who makes stupid fucking shorts while they film their heads in like a close up with like the Chad filter and they just like make a stupid silly face for a meme that gets 15 million views and someone who gets 100k views making videos on how to do dips in two minutes, I will always pick the second guy and that second guy is Max. So almost a perfect grade. For seniority seven, since I believe that the amount he's put in, in terms of effort and information in such a short amount of time must be commended. So I bumped his grade up, even though he is technically young on the platform. Then we have supplements nine, because I found one video where Max talks about supplements and he told the audience that the only supplements he took was whey protein, creatine, and multivitamins. And if there are any supplements that are worth anything, it's these three. Anything else outside of that is just plus, it's just bonus, and it won't do much. So to have a young man who is in a position to sell out, to sell tocosterone, to sell egg all of these bullshit bogus supplements that do nothing, and instead tells his audience, hey, focus on training, and if you absolutely want to take supplements, here's what I take, that is beautiful. My hat's off to Max. Then for physique, the final grade, I give him an 8. He has a very balanced physique. He looks very good shredded. He overdid a bit on his bulk. He has to be careful with that shit. But this is someone who, if he keeps going and if he keeps training naturally, is going to eventually blow everyone else out of the water. And I guarantee you that these steroid accusations are not going to stop anytime soon. Max Yushida, 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 total grade 142.5. Next up on the list, Sheezy. Programming 2. So the guy doesn't seem that interested in mapping out his training. He is fairly unstructured and tends to just do bro days or bro split, which is absolutely okay. But then he makes videos where he explains his split. And I've seen things that just confused me a bit because the guy will sometimes end sets and you don't quite know why he's not even close to failure. Sometimes he will be at failure and he'll keep just pumping out garbage baby reps. It's so inconsistent that I don't understand what you could learn from him. And I also have heard the guy said certain things that I don't quite like. Like, for example, we don't, we don't count reps. Counting reps is super important for hypertrophy. It's super important for bodybuilding. Not counting reps is the easiest way to make no progress whatsoever. He also has a tendency to do circuit training. So he'll do a lat exercise, then move on to another lat exercise right afterwards, which is also a cardinal sin of hypertrophy training because it destroys your performance. And granted, the guy is an ogre. He's tremendously big. But I also go to a gym where I see people train like this. And by and large, the thing that makes them all stay small is that, is the fact that they train like this. And this is something that you have to keep in mind with these influencers, these quote unquote Zoomer channels. Just because they go against the grain and get results does not mean that it's because their method is the best. It might just be because they're outliers. 
In terms of experience, I give him a seven because even though he only started training when he was 21, which is crazy, from what I know, this is in a sense a play on wood. He started training a long time before that, but he didn't take it seriously. So he did peewee football, he did lacrosse, and he played at a decently high level. So his physique and his experience with his body was already accumulated way before he stepped foot into a gym for the first time, which is important. People don't pay enough attention to that. But being physically active at a young age, as I said previously, means that you're going to have a much better idea of what works and what doesn't work when it comes time for you to actually put on muscle. Unfortunately, most of that doesn't seem to transpire in his content. For integrity, I give him a 7, because even though the guy is being accused left and right of being a fake natty, I don't see anything in his behavior that contradicts his own stance on anything. I don't see him betraying anyone, he just seems to be a dude who wants to get to the top level. Now, if he really wants that, eventually he's going to have to jump on PEDs, and that day I hope he's going to be honest about that PED use. But so far, I don't can I can't point out anything that to me demonstrates that the dude is a piece of shit. Then we have usefulness, A3. Unless you like to be bombarded with Brazilian funk music and close-ups of guys' faces, this channel is not going to teach you anything. If anything, it's going to make you unlearn things because you're going to have sound principles of hypertrophy in your head. Then you're going to listen to the guy who is built like a Greek god and who tells you to not follow that and you are very likely to actually follow his advice because you'll think, well, if it worked for him, it will work for me. So not the channel to follow if what you want is knowledge. For character, an eight, because I'm a sucker for the, the tough guy, meathead personality, I'm a sucker for the rich pianas of the wood and he reminds me of rich piana. A dude who looks super tough on the outside, but seems to be quite the sweet individual in, on the inside. I know that some people don't like that type. For me, the type I don't like is the ones I call the TRT daddies. It's a, these dudes in their 40s who act like everyone's dad and who are super dogmatic and super insulting all the time. That I don't like because I can tell it's fake. But for Cheesy, I don't think it's fake. I think this is really who he is. It's not a character. It's actually just his personality and it transpires. Then we have Dogmatism 7. So my only issue with the dude is that he has a tendency to reject principles that we know work. I don't know if he does that because he understands that it's appealing to your young audience or if it's just his personality and his way. Overall, it is tolerable, but it can get a bit silly. I've listened to the guy in some podcasts and interviews where... He was so determined into going against the grain that he said certain things that in terms of hypertrophy simply made no sense. Then we have originality. A4 because it's once again a vlog channel of sorts and it's a vlog channel with a personality type that has already been seen. So even though I might personally enjoy that type of character, there is nothing that we haven't seen before. If TikTok had the ability to create clones of humans directly using AI, they would create that guy. He was, he was engineered to be popular on social media. And so it's not necessarily his fault, but he is not bringing anything new to the table. Then we have the black pill. I'm giving him a six. This one was tough because he collabs with PED users, but he claims to not take PEDs and he's an ex addict himself. So I want to believe that he's someone who has actually experienced what it means to be the slave of drugs and to be under the influence of substances. But you never really know with these types, they lie very effectively. So I wanted to give him a middle of the road grade, I think. And also the fact that he's so tall makes me hopeful that maybe there's a ton of tall dudes that are going to look at him and think that, yes, they can get big too because they can. And so they're going to actually put in the work that is going to be necessary for them to look as big as their shoulder counterparts. So it really is a mixed bag. I didn't want to completely destroy his grade for allegations. Then we have humor seven, just like with uh, Lex Little, he's not trying to be funny, but he has interesting takes. It also comes from the fact that from what I understand, he had a rough life and a rough um, upbringing. And these people tend to have an interesting twist on existence because they've been through so much fucked up shit that they can look at a situation that most people would just be completely 
desperate about, and they can see the silver lining. They can make fun of it. And I like it. I like people like that. I like people who can find uh, in the middle of winter a little bit of sunshine. Then we have Parasocial 4. So he's running this entire Jack and Ma gimmick. If you've read back, he, Jack and Ma is a character who's very tall, very muscular, very angular face. And to be honest, he does look like Jack. And from what I know of his past, he actually has lived a life that is very similar to Jack. Where at some point he got stabbed and he still went to the gym, which, yes, it's midhead behavior. Yet, it, yes, it's stupid, but it's also fairly badass. We have to give him that. The issue is that his people, the people that watch him and follow him, fell for this nonsense. And now they're treating him like they would an anime character that exists in everyday life. That is his doing. He did that. He has to deal with that shit. Empathy 9, maybe because he went through so much, he is highly relatable, even if you haven't had a very difficult like life like he did. And you can also tell that this is not someone who is doing the whole influencer thing. I think it's just that his personality aligns so perfectly with what is popular on TikTok and on these platforms that it might make you think that, but I don't think it's the case. I think he is just genuine. He is truly himself. And so people relate. People can relate to a guy that doesn't even really look human. God Complex 7, for the reasons I announced previously, he is trying to run this entire gimmick. But at the same time, he's not pushing it too far. He clearly is down to earth. He clearly is approachable. So still a good grade. Production quality five. I don't know if it's an artistic license, if it's on purpose, but holy fuck, whoever films these videos needs to be fired. Every single time there's like this much of the screen where nothing happens and you have the guy's head that's like here, you're supposed to tilt the camera down. I understand that the guy is tall, but you don't, you don't need to point the camera at the fucking ceiling. Then there's some silly stuff where like, <laughs> I watched a video recently where they film some girl's ass. Okay, I get it. Your audience is teenagers and they are going to love it. But in terms of quality, that's, that's not professional. Right? I was going to say if, when you watch Avengers, they don't make close-ups of uh, what's her name. The ginger, the ginger chick who, who has a big ass, um, uh, you'll tell me in the comments, they don't make close-ups of her ass in the middle of a scene where there is action. Actually, I'm lying. They do that all the time because they understand that their movies are shit. Marvel has nothing to offer anymore, so now they make softcore porn. Uh, not the topic at hand, and we are already getting way out of topic. What was I? Production quality, five. Science, three, for the reasons uh, I stated earlier as well. I get, I get it. We'll, we'll get to that when we talk about the next day on the list. I understand that when you talk to a young audience, they don't like signs. They don't like all of this. It's boring to them. But it's dangerous to go too far into the other side where you begin to reject things that we know have been working for years and years. I was watching a podcast of him and another bodybuilder, an aesthetic guy, and the dude said, oh yeah, for strength, we know what works and there's only one thing that works. Not true. But for hypertrophy... It's whatever, bro. You can do whatever. No. Doing whatever is the reason why the average natural lifter looks like shit. If you can do whatever in the gym, not count your reps and not pay attention and still get a tremendous physique, it ain't because it's the optimal thing to do. It's because you're blessed. You're gifted. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not that. I am someone who has subpar genetics. I know what it took for me to get to 220. And it wasn't just shrugging my shoulders and doing whatever and it wasn't bro splits it was actually paying attention so bad advice for clickbait 8 i think the way cheesy uh finds his titles i keep calling him cheesy because it's sh the sh sound is tough in french cheesy but the, i think the way cheesy finds his titles is he's in the middle of prepping his food for his bulk and he's like on the phone with his chick. And in the middle of all that, he takes uh, five seconds to type the title of the video, then post publish and he leaves. Sometimes it's like chess day with no capital letters, just chess day and he's out of the door. That is like, as I said previously, so weird because Zoomers have this, this reputation for being the clickbaiters, but that's not true. Most of them do that. They just do informative titles. So great grade. Content recycling six. The guy has 14 videos. And they're already starting to resemble one another. So he gets away with it for now, but it's getting bad at a tremendously, I keep saying tremendous too. Every single time in every video, I have that one word I keep repeating. Take a shot of whey protein every time I say tremendous. So you get my gist, it's going downhill at a rapid uh, pace. 
Conciseness 3, the videos are long. 50 minutes for a vlog, bro? You think I'm going to watch this shit? I mean, I did because I wanted to prepare this video, but it's not proper business practices. You're supposed to cut that shit out. Sometimes he record himself just talk to the camera about a random topic for six minutes, which again, I understand is a vlog, but I don't get how you can retain people like this. Maybe it's because people have no friends. Seniority 2, he is a brand new person on this platform and he hasn't really proven himself yet. I think he started making videos seven months ago. So even though technically it's not his fault, I cannot give him a better grade than that. Supplements 3, because he is also sponsored by Gorilla Mind. If you want to beat the fake Nelly allegations, you better not be sponsored by them. It's not a good move. Also collabing with all of these pro bodybuilders, all of these like pro bodybuilding gurus only take people under their wing that juice. It's well known. So not a good grade for supplement and not a good sign for the rest of his potential ability to appear natural in the eyes of others. And then for physique, 9.5, tall, big arms, huge arms for someone that tall. And overall, yeah, Jack and Ma in real life. It's amazing. And as a total grade, we have 107.5 which was the grade that he had before I changed his grade for black pill. So in reality, Cheesy has 110.5. And now we're getting to the last name on this list, the person that most of you clicked on this video for, Sam Sulek. For programming, I'm giving Sam a three. He has questionable form on most exercises, which is something that many people like to shit on him for. He does what he wants, but at the same time, it's damaging for the people that follow him because proper form is the cornerstone of a proper lifting program. Even if the program is tremendous, if you mis-execute every single movement, you're not going to get the results that you should be getting. And I know it's part of the appeal, we'll get back to that later, but in terms of pure education and knowledge, that just ain't it. Then he also trains exactly like all of these pro bodybuilders, I guess because he got funneled into training with them, so he does bro splits. And the issue with a bro split is that it is the easiest way to spend a lot of energy for no results. When you do a back day and you do six back exercises for 25 fucking sets, yeah, yeah, that's wasted energy. You could have spent 20% of that time doing those back exercises and done something outside and gotten 95% of the gains. So not someone that you should actually follow when it comes to training like a natural lifter. And since his audience is 99% natural lifter, I have to punish him for that. Experience six, Sam started training five years ago and he is the type of person who likes to train every single day. And before that, he was also a high level athlete. He was actually a diver which is the weirdest transition I've ever heard of. Diver to bodybuilder, but all of that stems from the fact that this is someone who has the ability to compete and perform at a very high level, regardless of the discipline. And that is experience that cannot be taught, so six. Of course, he's still young, so I'm not giving him more than that. Integrity nine, I know, shocking, some of you are, I think, believing that I was going to destroy the guy on integrity because he's not natural. But understand one thing. Integrity is not whether or not the person aligns with what I believe is right. It's whether they align or not with what they believe is right. And from what we know, Sam never wanted to stay natural. He never wanted to preach the natural way. So whatever he is doing on his channel is aligned with his values. And so that is a perfect grade. Now, if eventually one day he backstabs his audience or he starts to sell out or he starts to become someone completely different against his values, if he gets a big head, for example, then his integrity grade would get lower. But so far, he is almost perfect. Usefulness five. A lot of the time, I believe that people watch Sam Sulek watch him not because of what there is to learn, but because it's it's a soothing presence. It's something that you watch in the background. It's almost like watching a stream. And that's fine. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but understand that this is not a good use of your time. That being said, you'll still learn from him. And I think that the thing that you will learn from him and the, what I call the Z's factor is love for lifting. Because I can say without blushing that Sam Sulek has motivated more people to go into the gym than I did. And that's something, right? We cannot, we cannot sneeze on that. It's an accomplishment. 
there is a new wave of gym goers and many of them are Sam's generation. So this means something. Now, are we going to lose 99% of them? Maybe, but at least there was an attempt. Character 10. Perfect grade for character because many people don't get that the appeal of Sam Sulek and the reason why he got so popular isn't because he's big. Sure, the guy is, is a mountain, but there are many people who are the same size as him or bigger, and these guys barely get a thousand likes on their post. The reason why Sam blew the fuck up is because he is a good guy, he is super relatable, and he is someone that you can tell is genuine. This is not a character. Sam invented the anti-gimmick. His gimmick is that he doesn't have a gimmick, and people take up to that. Even though the dude is, yes, on drugs, it doesn't change the fact that he's a good dude. And I think it's the reason why he's so detested. I don't know if you've noticed, but the majority of people who shit on Sam aren't natural lifters. Us naturals, we don't care about the guy. He does his own thing. The people who harp on him are the people who are also on drugs. Why? Because they're jealous of his success. He managed to do what they could never do, which is blow up and become mainstream. And also, Sam is really hurting their reputation because here you have a guy who takes PEDs, has gotten massive from it, both body-wise and popularity-wise, but he never let that change who he is. He's still the same dude. He never got a big head. So when you see all of these PD users with horrible personalities who behave like twats, and then you compare them to Sam, yeah, now you understand why they don't like him because he makes them look like clowns. Then we have Dogmatism 8. Uh, there's no dogmatic bone in Sam's body because he is a pure instinct-based lifter. He does what he feels like doing, and that is that. And that's a strength. Even though I think that programming is super important and you can just wing it, to a degree, if you're gifted enough and you just follow your way and you're super dedicated and you never stop, you're going to beat someone who is super applied and who follows the theory to a T, who is not able to stick to it. I've said it a million times before, you will get outdone by a guy who does push-ups and pull-ups in the park with a backpack with rocks in it, if you're not able to match that person's consistency. That was for dogmatism. Somehow this is uh, relevant, but it is. Because if you watch Sam, you're never going to be told, oh, don't do that, this is bad. And this is what people can't fucking stand anymore on this platform. Sam is a breath of fresh air because you're watching someone who is just going to encourage you to get into the gym without overthinking it too much. You can start to overthink once you get to a certain level. Then we have originality eight. That shouldn't be possible. Sam makes vlogs. He makes training vlogs. That was already a thing 15 years ago on this platform. How is he able to get that score? Well, I'll tell you why. Sam turned an old recipe into a new dish because he is the first one to take that formula, to take that format and turn it into a non-edited video that's super fucking long with no cuts and somehow still managed to turn it into something that people want to watch. That is hard. Mr. Here does the exact same thing. I make long as videos and I can tell you that to have a long video be popular is horribly difficult on YouTube. So this is something that must be saluted. And he is also the person that made this format come back on this platform. He's the person that encouraged all of these young people to start their own bulking session, bulking cycle videos on YouTube. We'll get back to that. That is where he loses points, but for originality, Sam is original. Then we have the black pill, a big fat zero. And that's not surprising, the dude is on PEDs, and worse than that, he never actually waited to get a decent body naturally without jumping, because he is someone who is hyper-competitive and he wants to see how big he can get. That is his life, that is his decisions. The issue is that he's documenting that shit, and we see the impact of that. How many young men have been encouraged to do the exact same thing? And how many of them are going to fail miserably because they're not Sam? They're going to throw away their life to be like their idol and they'll get nothing from it but health complications, their family suffering, and their lives being wasted. That is not a good influence. And I understand, once again, that it's his life that it's his right, I guess, to document his journey, but the impact he has on the people that he watches can be horrible. 
for the simple reason that when you see someone who gets that big off of juice, if you're a young man, there's a part of you that wants to do the exact same thing and who is going to think that training naturally is a waste of time and that is horrible. Then for humor, we have seven. So don't get it the wrong way because I share this trait myself, but Sam is autistic in the sense that he will sometimes just drop his spaghetti on camera. And I think that this is inherently hilarious because we can all relate to that level. He's not really awkward, but he is a shade of socially incompetent that sometimes can be appealing and almost attractive in a way. And so it makes for great comedy from time to time, which helps because the videos would be unbearable without it. Then we have Parasocial 3, even though Sam himself is not big on Parasocial, because he's such a big name and because he blew up so fast, the amount of fanboys he has is crazy. And these people decried him with such vigor that sometimes I wonder if they maybe have mistook him for the next Einstein, because sometimes I see videos where I think, wow, the bar is so fucking low. So you'll see Sam do a press and he'll tuck his elbows in and you'll see thousands of people being like, oh my God, look at him, he's such a genius. He was able to bias the tricep by tucking the elbow in. H how is that an accomplishment? We've known that shit for 10 years. The only way you're impressed by this is either because you're a fanboy or because you're so green and so new to lifting that you would be impressed by someone who does push-ups properly. And that's not Sam's fault, but I'm still going to punish him for that because it's his influence. And same with all of these copycats that want to be just like him. So this is the paradox of originality. The guy came in with a concept that he made fresh and he is himself something new that stands out and this is why people take to him. But the result is that now you have a bunch of people who are attempting to be exactly like him. Case in point, that fucking hair. I have people who remark on it and say, oh, are you trying to look like Sam Sulek? Motherfucker, I didn't even know the guy existed two months ago. I grow my hair because I want it long. But now I'm starting to see people who grow their hair because they want to look like him. How much of a clone and how much of a low personality individual are you that this is your life now, that you're going to try and mimic someone. And worse than that, someone that you'll never be able to match. You'll never be that guy. You'll just be the weird dude with greasy long hair who looks like shit by rocking a tank top in the gym, even though they look like a twig. Or you'll be the guy who jumps on PEDs, but because you don't have Sam's character, you're going to turn into a completely obnoxious meathead. Either way, not a good look at all. So parasocial three. Empathy nine. So when you watch Sam's videos, it's like talking to a friend. When he puts the camera in his uh, car, it really is like you're in the passenger seat and you're just listening to the guy. And that also is not fake, right? I have a good nose because it's so big for fakeness. And I can tell you that this is genuine. And so really what I think is happening with Sam is that we're dealing with someone who just wanted to document his journey and who never let the popularity and fame change him. He's still the same guy now as he was at, as, at the start of this entire thing. And this is due, I think, to his ability to just relate and just to be a normal person, which should be underlined and highlighted because PEDs tend to make that almost impossible, which makes me think that maybe it's not PEDs that make you an asshole. It's that people who are already assholes deep down become bigger assholes when they jump on drugs. But if you are a decent person and humble at the start, Drugs apparently don't have the ability to change your personality that much. And this is why, for God Complex, I'm also giving him a 10. This is something that I don't think many humans would be able to do. To have that much power and that much influence and not let it get to your head, not abuse it immediately, it must be celebrated with a perfect grade because you and I and the majority of people watching this video would break. If you had that amount of clout, you would become a complete fucking clown. Sam has managed to resist, which usually is the sign of someone who has a big ego. What I mean by this is that this is someone who is so self-assured that whatever other people think of him has very little impact. Then we have production quality 7.5. So it's no, it's no editing. There are no editing is in the video. It's just cuts, but that's pretty much that. The mic is great and the camera quality is great, but it's in terms of vlogs, at least, that's not what this entire thing is about. For Science 8, so this one is also shocking, just like with Integrity, you could tell me, okay, 8, what the fuck? The guy does partial reps, 
and he just seems to follow his instinct. He has never read a peer-reviewed study before. Well, first off, I would retort that the guy had discovered uh, lengthened partials before the science caught up to them. So take that. And two, it's something I predicted the longest time ago. And yes, I am going to taunt my own predictive abilities because just like Nostradamus, or in my case, Nostradamus, I told you guys three years ago that the fact that people were pushing the optimal training with such fucking vigor and the boom of science-based lifting was going to eventually result in the exact opposite, meaning a new generation of lifters who fucking hate science, don't want to be told what works and what doesn't, they just want to get into the gym and they want to lift. Anything else bores them to death and that's exactly what Sam represents. Sam represents the pendulum swinging all the way the fuck back while now mid-head training is going to be popular again. Am I happy about that? No, I would like a healthy middle ground, but this is just a reality. Then we have clickbait 10. If you look at Sam's titles, it's day of the bulk or the cut, and then whatever he's training on that day. That's it. No fluff, no click this, no, it will kill your gains. Nothing to attract the eye. And then you have the thumbnail, and the thumbnail is always just a still from the video, which blows the mind of all of these gurus on social media who think, well, how is this possible? How did he break the algorithm? I'll tell you how. One, it's the human aspect, because Sam is relatable and people take up to his personality. And two, it's because he started on TikTok. So when you start on TikTok and then you start on another social media, you get a massive fucking influx of people who click on your video, even though it's not being recommended to them, which then in results confuses the algorithm who promotes the video to more people and you blow the fuck up. That is actually a glitch in the machine, a glitch that YouTube is perfectly aware of, and that's exactly what they want. They want to make sure that people who are on TikTok come back onto YouTube, and Sam is doing that for them, which is why he's also their golden child. He is the only person I've ever seen being recommended outside of the mainstream fitness sphere, meaning that you can be a random person who doesn't give a fuck about bodybuilding, you will have Sam's videos on your feed. That should not be possible. The only people who have that happen to them are Afrinex or some of these big names who have millions of subscribers. I found Sam's videos on my wife's feed. So either she has something to tell me or the guy is just going mainstream at a massive fucking pace. And all of that without clickbaiting. Then we have content recycling. Three, it's the same stuff times and times again. You're eating pasta every single day with a slightly different sauce. I do not understand how you do it. I, I don't have anything against the guy, but sitting through his content is a torture because nothing happens. So I guess it's like, uh, you know this game Nintendogs that we used to play and you have a dog in your portable console and you play with it and it's a shitty replacement for having a real dog. I think that Sam is the imaginary friend that people, teenagers, have never had. He's that bro you wish you had to go to the gym to and train hard, but because he doesn't exist in real life, you replaced him with a virtual personality. A, if it works, it works. There's also an hypnotic tendency or an hypnotic quality to vlogs, especially Sam's, where without you knowing it, you're already 15 minutes in. For me, it fades very fast, but I can tell from the amount of people who love his videos and his watch time in particular that this hypnotic ability is very, very developed. Then we have conciseness too. The guy makes longer videos than I do. How is this even possible? How can you spend an hour and 30 minutes with a guy who goes to the supermarket? When I have to go to the supermarket, I wish I had an ability to numb myself before I go and just be zombified on my way because it's so boring. There's such low mental stimulation that I have to force myself to do it because it's such a chore. And you have people who enjoy watching someone else going grocery shopping and then talking about the stuff that they bought. How? How do you like the mundanity of life so much? Teach me your ways, please. But yeah, the videos are way too fucking long, Jesus. Then Seniority7, even though the guy started his channel less than a year ago. Yes, I know, it's crazy, because it feels like years that I've been hearing about this Sam Sulek guy, but his channel is not even a year old, and he already has 2 million subscribers. So, the dude, I think it is the fastest rise in the history of YouTube fitness. And even if you don't like the dude, even if you think that it's not earned, don't matter. I still have to reward it with a high grade. For supplements too, because he is affiliated with 
all-star athlete and every single name on their roster is a PD user and a pro bodybuilder who then turn around and sell supplements that have nothing to do with the reason why they're big, which are then bought by young men who think that it's going to help them look like them. All of that just stinks of scam. The fact that it's legal is amusing and also very sad, but I have to give him a shit grade for that because it's not ethical at all to sell something that you know has no incidence whatsoever, especially with the prices. $40 for pre-workout? Just drink coffee, bro. Then we have Physique. For Sam, I'm going to give him a perfect 10 because from what I understand, he is on his way to get his pro card. And that's unsurprising. He looks absolutely tremendous. Another reminder to not do drugs because the chances of you looking like he does with what he takes is 0%. Total grade for Sam Sulek, 127.5. And that is going to conclude this video. This was only part one of the Zoomer edition. I'm actually working on a part two with four additional channels that I want to review. So if you enjoyed this episode, consider joining the almost 400 people that are making these videos possible by pledging memberships on my coffee page. It's the first link in the description. As little as $3 a month already makes a big difference and allows me to continue making these videos for you guys. Let me know in the comments if there are certain names that you want to see me review in the series. But that's going to be that for tonight. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.